Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by scalar and vector quantities giving examples. You should then be able to describe how a vector quantity can be represented by an arrow. Ok I'm showing you here a list of different quantities that we often measure or calculate in physics. We've got mass, temperature, speed, energy, distance and time. Now all of these are examples of scalar quantities. Scalar quantities have magnitude only, and the word magnitude means size. Scalar quantities do not have a direction. So we're going to look at distance as an example of a scalar quantity. I'm showing you here a map. Imagine that you wanted to go from point A to point B. This shows a possible route. Now if you took this route, you would travel a distance of around 800 meters. But the key point is that distance gives us no idea of the direction. And that's because distance is a scalar quantity. All of these locations are at a distance of 800 meters from our starting point. So simply stating a distance does not tell us where we're going. So as we said before, scalar quantities have magnitude, in other words size, only. Remember that scalar quantities do not have a direction. OK, here are some other quantities that we can measure or calculate in physics. We've got displacement, weight, force, velocity, acceleration, and momentum. Now these are all vector quantities. That's because these all have both magnitude and direction. So going back to the previous example, we saw that distance is a scalar quantity because it gives us no idea about direction. However, displacement is a vector quantity. And that's because displacement is distance in a specific direction. So in our journey, we've traveled a distance of 800 meters. However, our displacement is 500 meters due west from our starting point. So can you see that with displacement, we have to state the magnitude, in this case 500 meters, and the direction, which in this case is due west. Now we can represent vectors using an arrow, and I've done that with displacement on this map. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector and the direction of the arrow represents the direction of the vector. We're going to be looking at all of these vectors in the topic on forces, and you'll be seeing arrows being used in each case. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on scalar and vector quantities in my Vision Workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.